Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I want to share with you all a dream that I had. It had to have been early this morning, very, very early in the morning. Um, and in the dream, it was like I woke up and I just felt so irritated when I woke up, you know, distressed. And I just start to pray and seek God on some things and everything. And I just was like, Lord, help me to figure out what this means. And so, as usual, when I do pray, sometimes the Lord will either give me the revelation right away or I will find out later on. So it is well past this morning and the Lord gave me the revelation of it. Now, when dreams occur, the first thing I want to do is like, Lord, is this for me? Is this me? Is this mine? And is, am I doing something that's wrong? And the Lord just wants me to share this with everyone. He wants me to share this dream with his people. He's letting me know this is a warning. This is a warning to all his children. And he's letting me know that there are some people who feel like they have a... They, <laughs> there are some things that people are contemplating and thinking of doing one more time or getting involved in some things thinking they have time and they can get back and you're not going to be able to do that. And so let me tell you the dream. So in the dream, I was somewhere. It looks like, I don't, I can't remember where it was. It was just this big business place. I want to say it almost like a hospital, kind of remind me of that, but not really. It just looked like it was just a place where a lot of different businesses were there. Um, and so I was supposed to, I was supposed to meet with someone, like to have a meeting. And the room was literally right there. And at that moment, it was like, I felt like, oh, I could just go grab something to eat or I think either go to the, go to the restroom or I think it was just like, I want to go get something really fast. And what I was trying to get, it was not far from there. I knew exactly where the room was. I was right next to it. But it was like, oh, let me just go over here and just grab this really quick. And so when I went to do that, I went and got what I needed. And when I was trying to get back to the room, I could not find this place for nothing. I mean, I was turning in every different direction and I could not get back to that room. And where I had gone to grab whatever or whatever it was, I can't remember, was not far. I would say it would literally would have been like two doors down or right there within, um, you know, you can see the room and where I was. It was not far, but when I went there and came back out to try to find that room, I couldn't find the room for anything. In my dream, I was searching and searching and searching and searching. And then there was just keen sense of, I'm like, I'm going to be late because I just had a few minutes. And so it was just like, I'm late. I'm late. There was a sense, this dread, this, this almost terror in me to know that as I'm looking, I'm looking, I am, I'm trying to find my way back. There was a sense of time is running out. Time is running out. Time is running out. You are late. This meeting has got to be over by now. That's just, I just knew it. But no matter how much I searched and searched and searched and searched, I found myself like further away and out. I was like, at some point, it seemed like I was way off outside on the side somewhere that would look like, you know how like a back of a building would look. And there were all these, I, I had no idea where I was. And no matter how much I was turning around to try to find the place that I was at, I could not. I could not. So it was a mixture of frustration, panic, and the whole time knowing that I am late, late, late. You're missing it. You're missing it. It's done. It's done. It's gone. That meeting is over. That's how I was feeling in the dream. And, you know, I woke up, I was just so like, oh, what was that? Because I could feel like when I woke up, the lump was still in my throat, that distress was still there. And, you know, I just started praying like, God, is am I lost? Am I doing something wrong? You know, I always do that if I have dreams like that. 
But when God will let me know, you know, if it's me and something's going on with me, he's going to tell me. And I'm like, Lord, what's going on? I'm not even, I'm not even doing nothing. Like, you know, but still, I never just think, oh, I'm good. I'm good. But the Lord was just letting me know this is a prophetic dream. And he was like, warn my people, warn my people that this is not the time to go do something real quick. This is not the time to take chances and say, well, I'm just going to do this and then I'll get back with God. This is not the time to say, well, I'm going to take a break. This is not the time to go and venture off into other things and think, oh, it's going to be as usual. It's not going to be business as usual. The thing that you are planning to do, certain steps that some of God's children are planning to take. Sometimes people think that they're going to backslide like they've done in the past and take a month or two off or a few months off and then they're going to come back to God. You're not going to be able to do that this time. The Lord just has laid it in my heart. I believe that he has given me this, has mandated me to speak this to you all to let you know some of you, you're planning some stuff. You're planning something, a venture, or there's something that you think that you're going to be able to do and come back to God like you always do. And the Lord wants me to warn you that you're not going to be able to come back. You won't be able to find your way back. You have to know that the times are very wicked. It's exceedingly wicked. The devil is snatching souls left, right, and center because the end is near. And some of you may say, well, the end's been near since forever, but you got to realize your end could also be near. None of us are going to live forever. And people tend to think they can just jump in and out of salvation. Oh, I'm saved, but then I'm going to go out here and do this. I'm saved. Some people have been living this life of you're, you say that you're a Christian, but you're doing a lot of sinful things and you're thinking, oh, well, you know, God's going to forgive me or I no longer have to be redeemed because God died for me once and for all. And you just keep sinning in your life. But that sin is going to take you right off the path. The sin, that sin is going to snatch you off of that path. And before you know it, one of the things that's going to happen to a lot of people that can, that continue to ignore the word of God and what it says about sin is that they're going to be turned over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is where you're lost in your own delusion and yourself. People will be ex a, um, they will experience the second, second Corinthians four and four, I believe. Let me take a look at it, guys. Yes. So it's in second Corinthians chapter four and four, and it talks about the, the, your mind can be blinded, can be blinded. Okay. The God of the world can blind the minds of those who continue to, to, to refuse the truth. And after a while, God will just close out any sort of, of um, any desire for him will just be gone. And then you'll be lost in your own delusions and in your own deception. Because deception, when you embrace it, it's going to eventually deceive you. It's going to cloud your understanding and darken your eyes because people refuse to take heed to the word of God. It's just in my heart to just say, don't do it to somebody. Don't do it. Somebody need to hear this. Don't do what you're planning on doing. You're not going to end up the same. It's not going to be what you think. You're not going to be able to just go and sneak out and slip out or do this thing that you've been doing and get away with it anymore. Many people that continue to sin against God, he's going to turn them over to a reprobate mind. Others, it's just going to be a delusion. You're not going to see anything anymore. Your heart will be hardened. Your neck will be stiff. And all that will be your end is the destruction and the wrath of God. Some of you, you're, you're, you're flirting with the danger of sin. You know the Lord is speaking to you and telling you, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But yet you think that you're going to be able to do what you've always done. You're thinking you have time. There's a lot of people thinking, I have time. The Lord gives a parable of that, that when the mass, the servant saw that the Lord with, with his master was taking a while to come back. He said, oh, the Lord tarries. He, he tarries in his return. So he began to just break camp and doing what he wants to do and start to fall into all kinds of debauchery and sin. And then suddenly the father, suddenly the, the master returned. And that's how a lot of people are going to be caught. Not just sinners, 
But a lot of Christians, people who say that they know God are going to be caught that way. They're going to think that, you know what? I'm just going to relax. I'm going to just, you know, what's the word? I'm just going to, guys, what is the word that I'm looking for when people say they want to relax? Okay, they're going to take a breather. They're just going to chill for a little bit, you know, kick back a little bit, and you won't be able to return from it. That reprobate spirit is out there, guys. And sin, when it perpetuates, is going to blind you. Sin, when it perpetuates and taking chances. Some of you may say, well, I've never really done anything. Think People think that, you know, they can just relax and kick up and do whatever they want to do. And they can take a chill pill. This is not the time to do it because this is a time where the powers of darkness are on high alert and they are going for souls they are waiting some souls are just waiting to snatch you up just waiting for you to come outside stick yourself out here come out cross over into our arena come on into our camp and see what's going to happen so the warning is it's not going to end the way you think it is it's not going to be those usual sins the ending will not be the same you're not going to be able to just come back a lot of people are banking on forgiveness and just returning to the Lord, but some are not, some of you, well, many are going to find themselves not being able to find the way anymore because that sin is probably what's going to lead you to reprobate, to a reprobate mind because you've been doing it for a while or you've been testing God in this area for a long time. And some of these sins, when you join with this person, you're not understanding the, the level of darkness and sin that you're engaging with because they have been sent to take you off the course. You have it in your mind that, okay, I'm just going to do this. And then I'm just going to get back with God. And you will find that you will not be able to see the word. You will no longer be able to get things out of the word of God that you used to. Your worship, your praise, it will be different. Your prayers will be different. And sometimes your desire for it will just be gone. It's not business as usual, guys. And so that's just the, the word that the Lord has laid in my heart. Don't venture out into the world. Don't venture out into to play with the enemy. Don't venture out there to do something because you think that you can get back real fast. And that also shows the coming of the Lord. There's a lot of people that's going to step out at that very moment and realize that the bridegroom has come and gone. And they're going to be searching and searching and searching and crying for God. Lord, you forgot me. Lord, Lord, open up to me. But it's going to be too late. Stay the course. Stay the course. Don't get distracted. Don't be like Esau, losing eternity over what? A morsel of something that the world tries to offer you and you lose everything. Don't lose your soul for the morsels and the temporary rewards that this earth and that carnality offers.